Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen. Along with the insane Daryl Wayne, join us at LateNightHealth.com. Visit us at Facebook.com slash LateNightHealthRadio and find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, and much, much more. Uh, We're going to go to uh, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. We're going to spend some time with Nikki Fleming. She is a, a public affairs specialist for the U.S. Product Safety Commission, and we're going to be talking about Pool Safely campaign. Nikki, welcome to Late Night Health. Thanks for having me. Instead of saying a safety campaign, you're calling it a safely campaign. Why? Yes, we want consumers to actually not only be educated about uh, pool and spa water safety tips, but actually to actually implement those water safety steps to try to reduce drownings. CPSC's latest report shows a steady rise in fatal child drownings. Summertime, obviously, everybody wants to swim, uh, whether it be uh, at a beach in the ocean or in a family pool or even in community pools or in gyms. But community pools and gym pools, I think, are still closed, aren't they? Yes, families are spending much more time uh, at home together due to COVID restrictions. This could actually lead to curious children searching for new things to do, and we also know that adults um, may be distracted by competing priorities there at home. I know that young kids in particular, I think like one to five, they're at the biggest risk for drowning. Correct. On average, we're seeing 379 reported pool or spa-related fatal drownings per year, and that's for 2015 through 2017. Those involve children younger than 15 years of age. Of those, children younger than five accounted for 75% of these fatal drownings. Oh, my. And I guess it's because, one, the kids don't know how to swim, but, two, the parents are just not watching isn't you know the phone rings something's burning on the barbecue and they walk away supervision is critical Uh, we know that 56 percent of uh, the children younger than five they're they're attributed to a gap in adult supervision so it's a critical part uh, one of the first steps uh, in and around water there should always be an adult a water watcher and you want to put that water watcher um, in place at all times, and they should not be distracted by texting, using their smartphone, um, answering a phone or a door. Uh, you should, your sole responsibility is keep, to keep an eye on the children in and around the water. I, I'm going to be somewhat gross here. Drowning is not a fun way of going. And it's important for families to understand that drownings happen quickly and they happen quietly. Um, And these safety tips are not only important for pools and spas. Uh, We want to warn uh, everyone to also remember, again, being home. uh, This includes bathtubs, buckets, decorative ponds, and fountains as well. So in any body of water, again, you want supervision is critical and key. I used to hear that you could drown in a teaspoon full of water. Is that true? Do you know? It's actually, I believe it's about inches. It can take as as little as a few inches of water. I know with the buckets in particular, if a young child were to topple head first into a bucket and uh, not be able to free themselves by pushing themselves up out, that that is a way to drown. And again, it it happens quickly, quickly, silently, quietly. It's not like in the movies. The children won't be flailing their arms. Um, So that's why the the supervisor, uh, the water watcher, is so critical. Um, uh, to make sure that person is is, uh, keeping an eye on the children. You said it's quick. How long does it take for a child to drown? Just minutes. So, again, um, installing multiple layers of protection is the best defense to keep your child safe. So when I say layers of protection, not only your perimeter fence, four-sided fence, four-foot fence, with a self-latching, self-closing gate. You want that gate to close each and every time you go through it. Um, You also want to look into putting in place a a door alarm. If the fourth side of your pool is your home 
and it could be a, a, a sliding glass door, a regular door. You can install a door alarm so that you're alerted uh, that the child has left the home and could be gaining access um, to the pool or spa. Um, also, there are actual pool alarms you can put in the pool itself. So if the water is broken, uh, you can be aware, again, uh, that the child is um, has, has entered the water. Adults drown too, so we 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 even though this program is is designed to say, "Hey, let's watch our kids." Are you aware of adult drownings? I mean, people who don't know how to swim, for example. Yes, um, yeah. Enrolling your children in swimming lessons is the best way. Um, for them to learn how to swim and add that le- extra layer of protection. But it's super important that parents as well and adults as well also know how to swim. In case of an emergency, you want to be able to react and respond um, to a child or anyone drowning um, in the pool. Also learning CPR. Um, that's another critical layer of protection. Um, and, and adults should learn CPR for both adults and for young people. That can give you that critical time as you're calling for emergency assistance. It seems to me also that um, uh, people of color, black, brown, are uh, particularly at a disadvantage here. Do we know why? Well, we know research by USA Swimming Foundation shows that while improvements are being made, about 64% of African-American children and 45% of Hispanic children still cannot swim. Uh, The sad truth is that disparities in swimming um, continue to be a generational issue and put them at a higher risk. Which what you're saying is that they're just not taught how to swim. They don't know how to swim. Right. If parents can't swim, there is a high likelihood that their children will also not be able to swim. In African-American families where the parents cannot swim, nearly 80% of their children also cannot swim with community pools closed what would be the best way to teach your child to swim if you don't have a pool these days yes definitely um, check with your local uh, parks and recreation organizations like the YMCA the Red Cross and even USA Swimming they do have online courses and what they call dry land courses Um, take advantage of that. The fact that you are home, perhaps due to COVID and perhaps your local pools are closed, take advantage to um, not only um, educate um, your family um, and yourself, but also the kids. Um, Even visiting our website, poolsafely.gov, we have activities uh, for families as well as lots of resources um, to help protect families again on what you can do again to implement these simple water safety steps each and every time and then also games and activities for the children again to not only educate them but to entertain them at the same time and that's pool safely dot uh, org or dot, dot gov, gov dot gov, yes. dot gov. Uh, pool safely s-a-f-e-l-y dot Gov. Correct. Thank you. And and I, you know, I can remember blowing bubbles um, in the uh, in the bathtub. My dad would have me blow bubbles in the bathtub, and I'm I'm talking about putting my face in the water and blowing. Um, not anything. Uh, well, not letting gas is what I'm trying to say because that happens too in the bathtub, but. Is that a good start to for for safety in a bathtub? Yes, you, again, supervision would be key uh, in any body water, including a bathtub. Um, but making sure that um, children are not fearful of the water um, is also an important factor to, to help um, in the beginning uh, introduction of, of getting your child acclimated with water. Um, but again, as the parents know, the dangers of water as well. We know kids are curious and they're attracted to water. Um, they don't, a lot of times, don't, you know, especially younger children, may not have that fear of um, entering water when an adult's not nearby. So, again, that supervision uh, becomes critical in all bodies of water. Nikki, thank you very much for joining us. Nikki Fleming from the uh, U.S. Product Safety Commission. And we're talking about the Pool Safely campaign. 
Uh, I'm Mark Allen along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Late Night Health continues. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation.